And I know this is stretching it a little bit, but it's plausible that I can learn physics on this phone. So content isn't scarce any longer. It's everywhere. That stuff that kids used to come to us for, it's everywhere. And teachers aren't scarce anymore either. There are bajillion physics teachers, a bajillion scientists, Spanish teachers, out there right now. Lots of people that I can learn with and learn from. Is that the best case? I, that's not what I'm arguing. I'm simply trying to say that is the fact right now. I don't need my, ch my, my children don't need schools in the same way that I needed schools. They have different opportunities. And the elephant in the room is there are a lot of kids in this country and around the world, obviously, who don't even have that access to learn those things in the ways that my kids can. My kids are really lucky. The kids who go to this school are really lucky. You have a one-to-one -one program. You have oodles of access, right? The question is, what are you doing with it? So the National Council of Teachers of English, I don't know if you've seen these, but a couple of years ago, they decided to come out and redefine literacy. Develop proficiency with the tools of technology. That's a part of literacy now. If you don't have proficiency with technology, you're not, you're not literate. And I like the, the vagueness of that, the tools of technology, whatever the tools are. And in this case, the tools are more about social media and social kinds of connections than they are about PowerPoint and Word and <laughs> smart boards and things like that. Build relationships with others to pose and solve problems collaboratively and cross-culturally. Are you doing that? Rhetorical question. But are you building relationships with others to pose and solve problems collaboratively and cross-culturally? Are you designing and sharing information for global communities to meet a variety of purposes? Are you doing that? Managing, analyzing, synthesizing multiple streams of simultaneous information. I mean, we could spend 15 minutes trying to figure out what that means. But what it means is, it's not good enough to have one kind of static flow of information in your life. The newspaper is not your sole source of information, or the textbook is not your sole source of information. We are in many streams of information now that come in simultaneously. Are you creating, critiquing, analyzing, and evaluating multimedia texts? Are you doing that? And are you attending to all the ethical responsibilities around that? So, I don't know, rhetorical question. Are you literate according to the National Council of Teachers of English? Could you check all those boxes? And could the kids in this school, are they walking out of here with literacy in that context? It's a hard definition. It's a very different definition from what most people see literacy as. So there are amazing opportunities to learn and to be learners now, but here's the deal. If we really want to bring these opportunities to our kids, you know where it starts, right? It starts with us. We cannot be models for learning in these contexts if we're not playing and participating ourselves. If we see the world differently, if we see learning happening differently, are we going to wait for someone to ask us to do it? Or are we going to lead? Are we going to be the learning experts in the community and say, you know what, for our kids to be literate, for our kids to understand learning in a different way, for our kids to take advantage of these ubiquitous connections, for our kids to really flourish in the world that they're going to live in, we're going to have to do something else now. We're going to have to prepare them for something else as well. Something that maybe we haven't done a great job of preparing them for in the past, and something that no one's asking us to prepare them for, but we got to do it anyway. Because we see that as a piece of success at this moment that really is important for them to understand. And my question now for this year is, are you going to be bold or are you going to be old? And I mean that sincerely, because I think right now educators have to be bold. If you're not getting outside the four walls, you're not being bold. The best schools are the ones where the teachers take a learning disposition, take a learning pose in the classroom and ask questions that they can't answer. And then work with kids to answer those questions. Expect innovation and invention and failure? Absolutely. If failure is not happening in your classroom, why not? And by the way, we lead the conversation around learning. Lead the learning conversation. You lead it. You convince parents that their kids will get into college, but also be those types of learners that you want them to be, that they need to be passionate, deep, 
patient, gritty, agile learners. Kids who love to learn, who don't give up, who love problems, right? And that they've gotten those dispositions from the people in their classrooms and the experiences that they've had in their classrooms. But it's not about passing a test. It's about solving a problem. It's about sharing something with the world that changes the world. It's about doing meaningful, real work. Schools should be real life, 